electoral crisis that require extra to the AP Citizens Coalition has led by Advocate Nelson Chamisa met collectively under the National Citizen Assembly to look into the crisis that is bedeviling our country and come up with a sustainable way forward and resolution. We believe as citizens, as the citizens' movement, we believe without doubt that the election on the 23rd of August 2023 does not reflect the truth of the Zimbabwean people. The election was fraud, the entire process was shambolic and illegal. We have emerged out of this crisis as a people because of the failure of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission to hold a free, fair, and credible election. All the stakeholders that have observed this election have condemned the Zimbabwean election, the pre-electoral environment, the election itself, and the post-electoral environment that we are in today. This election fell by all standards to meet the requirements of the law of our country, which is the Electoral Act and the Zimbabwean Constitution read together. It fell to meet the standards as articulated by SADAC, the African Union, the European Union, and all the observers that were observing this election. We know as a movement that thousands of voters were disenfranchised by the illegal vehicle that was used by ZANPEF called the Forever Association of Zimbabwe, which was stationed all over the polling station in the country, particularly in the countryside. Thousands of polling stations were manned by these individuals, were intimidating, harassing, and coercing Zimbabweans to vote for a particular political party. <clears throat> Our supporters, our members were intimidated, were harassed. One of our members of parliament candidates here in Harare was actually arrested on course of his campaign, signifying and signaling without doubt how fraudulent, illegal, coercive his election was. The main of manipulation included the following areas. Number one, harvest of fear. Number two, intimidation. You know the greatest scandal in the history of elections in this country was the opening time of polling stations, particularly in Harare, in Manikaland, and in Bulawayo. A deliberate voter suppression of the urban vote, leading to low turnout, leading to an outcome that does not reflect the true will of the Zimbabwean people. Some voters were thrown out of their polling station by a flawed delimitation process, which had the effect dramatically suppressing turnout in urban areas. Most of the people who went to the polling stations discovered that their names were not there in their traditional uh, polling station. They deliberately suppressed the urban vote, deliberately skewed the election in favor of Zanfir. In the lead up to the election, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission also broke the law by not providing the voters law. Law enforcement consistently weaponized maintenance and order act against uh, the opposition to deny our members, to deny our party the freedom to assembly, the freedom to gather, and the freedom of choice. Majority of our meetings, particularly in the countryside, were stopped, interfered with, even if we had given a clearance by the police in line with the laws of our country. <laughs> After the election day, there were serious challenges on the tabulation of the vote, including the widespread reports about agents being illegally recalled to polling stations and adjustment of V11s and V23s across the country, and the urban areas were not spared from this chicanery. The administration of these elections disenfranchised and ranged Zimbabweans across the country who deserve better and demand better. 
The biggest question is what have we done as a movement to address this crisis? We have mounted extraordinary effort to restore legitimacy to the election results by doing what no opposition party should be doing because that is the primary responsibility of the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission which has the honors to announce the results and to back up the results that they've provided to the Zimbabwean people. Thousands of our volunteers and supporters have risked violence and gone extraordinary strength and personal expense to collect and return original copies of the V11s across the country, each of them willing to pay the price for the safety of making sure that we have our own parallel voter tabulation, which reflects the will of the people. We know that hundreds and thousands could not make it because of these barriers that we have articulated. What do we do to resolve this crisis? That is the biggest question, fellow Zimbabwe. It is clear, it is non-negotiable, that we cannot settle for any leader in Zimbabwe who lacks the true democratic will of the Zimbabwean people. A leader must be born out of a legitimate electoral process because that is what democracy and election is all about. This election as it stands was an election without democracy, dominated by many of manipulation that I've just articulated. A true democratic mandate can only be derived from freely expressing Zimbabweans through the power of the ballot. And therefore, any president that must be inaugurated must be born out of a free, fair, and credible election. Therefore, the only resolution and way forward articulated by C for avoidance of doubt and confusion is that Zimbabwe needs a fresh and broad and proper election to exit the current crisis. A flawed electoral process has fully obscured the will of the Zimbabwean people. And there is no alternative outside a new, clean, fresh, and a proper election. Only that can give Zimbabwe an exit out of the vicious cycles of disputed elections that have been dominating our body politic since 1980. Fellow Zimbabweans, Every Zimbabwe, no matter whom they support, has an absolute and sacred and sovereign right to know that the government which taxes them, the government which polices them, which commands their military and manages the affairs of their state is chosen freely, equally by all Zimbabwean people. In the current political crisis, the only way this sacred right can be fulfilled, the only way we can resolve the current predicament that we are facing as a people, the Citizens Coalition for Change, as led by Advocate Nelson Chamisa, has assessed the situation and has made this following clear and emphatic demand, that to exit and restore democracy and legitimacy in our country, we are going to settle for less, none other than a free, fair, credible, and a proper election in our country. Now, the biggest question that faces Zimbabwean society right now is how do we achieve this desired end? How do we, to put it differently, restore legitimacy in our country? Our answer to all Zimbabweans and Africans at large the solution lies in calling upon our African brothers and those in the region, particularly SADA, the African Union, to help us to facilitate, to mediate, to scaffold, and more importantly, to guarantee a process that will lead our return to legitimacy in the shortest period of time. Fellow Zimbabweans, this is our position as the Citizens Coalition for Change. And if there are any few questions, 
I'll take a few questions before we proceed. Thank you. <coughs> We have made it very clear. Thank you for that question. That Zimbabwe faces a legitimate question. And the solution to resolve that crisis is that Zimbabwe must be able to go back to the road to democracy and legitimacy. But to do so, we must ensure that we sit down and scaffold the process by SADC, by the African Union, that guarantees Zimbabwe to have a free, fair, and credible election. So this election that was just coming from was a flawed process in its entirety for avoidance of doubt. And the solution, to put it very clear, is to have a fresh, free, fair, and credible election. Thank you very much. Does it mean that you are abandoning the agenda of putting uh, ZEC on the line, demanding a recount uh, of, of the election, of, 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 of the votes? Uh, there's also been talk of you taking ZEC to the courts. The Zimbabwe Electoral Commission failed in the following respect. Number one, <coughs> it failed the credibility test. Number two, it failed the transparency test. Number three, it failed the professional test. And therefore, ZEC failed its fidelity to the Zimbabwean constitution, and ZEC must be disbanded. And a credible player, a professional player, scaffolded by regional and international players, is the only way to have a free, fair, and credible election in this country. Does it mean you are no longer engaging ZEC going forward? ZEC has failed this mandate. Zimbabweans understand that. That decision, that call does not come only from Triple C. ZEC was caught in flagranti delicto, undermining its responsibility and its fidelity <laughs> from the Constitution. Zimbabweans across the political divide have this particular consensus, have the conversation with members of the church, talk to the clergy, have conversation with members of the Sikh society, whose facilitation of having a power of water tabulation despite the commitment by ZEC had their offices being raided. So that is a sign that Zimbabweans across hopes of life have this consensus at this particular moment. Go and talk to other political parties. And that's why we have said we have to make sure that as Zimbabweans, not just Triple C, but as Zimbabweans, we must make sure that a new and fresh process can give a mandate. Because for the past year, Zimbabwe has been moving with a disputed state with the contested state. And that's why you see all these social and economic crises that have been developing our country because of the contested leadership. What happens when you leave going to court hey. and to who are elected? Are you not going to accept the results of wrong or discrimination? We have made it very clear that the entire election in this country was flawed. The entire election in this country was illegal. The entire election in this country, I'm not so sure which language should I use to put it unequivocally so that the election, the election in this country was flawed in its entirety and in total and Triple C has rejected the election and the solution is holding a new, fresh and proper election in this country. Without taking the court court. The course that we are going to take is a collective course that does not only include Triple C, that is including every player which was affected. You know that some of the candidates to other parties were not allowed uh, to participate. You know of the presidential, one of the presidential candidates, Sevia Kasukwe. His name was not on the ballot. That's why we have said the flawedness of the process is not only on the announcement of the result. It is on the pre-electoral uh, cycle, during the election, and post the election. How do you are you going, going to court? Are you going we are going to not? employ all the necessary measures at the right time that answers our roadmap. What we have articulated and resolved right now for avoidance of doubt is that Triple C, number one, rejects the election in total. Number two, Triple C as a movement is very clear that the solution from this crisis is a process that is scaffolded, guaranteed by SADC and the African Union that will lead us into a genuine, free, fair, and proper election. In the event that what you are going to fulfill, what are you going to do? I don't know if you are a prophet, but we'll deal with it as we go. <laughs> yes. We have a few days left before um, the court process.
I don't know yeah. what way is the real one okay, coming. It's it's not a real one, but we have said there must you be. You want another election, and what if the NPF refuses to go for another election? They will always refuse. They have their own, they are a party, and I'm sure you have access to that party. I don't speak on behalf of the NPF. I speak on behalf of the dejected masses of our people, the oppressed. That is what Triple C represents. We are not worried about the interests of other players. We are worried about the interests of Zimbabwean people, the ordinary people whose will was stolen in this particular election. Yes, sir. How do you yeah, get uh, Sada and Africa court. Union to Are you going to take any challenge to court? Are you country? going to court? Uh, what is your appetite with the legal rules, my brother? Yeah. We have said our position as a movement that we said we need a new, fresh, and proper election in this country whose process is scaffolded by SADAC, by the African Union, and all the interested parties in the democracy of our country. Yes, Lutendo? I was saying, you, how do you get SADAC and the AU to mediate in this crisis and call for a uh, fresh election when Zimbabwe says it's a sovereign country? And question number two, have you already communicated with SADAC and African Union or this is just your position as a party? Look, uh, I'm sure uh, Rutendo is a student of international relations. You understand that Zimbabwe does not work in isolation. It exists. And I'm sure that our friends in Zanupi understand that very well. And that the mantra, Zimbabwe has been isolated from the international community thanks to exhausted political rhetoric that has caused problems and suffering for our people. What we need right now is, is not further isolation of our country. We need to make sure that we engage with our friends and brothers in the region. Zimbabwe is a burden to South Africa. Zimbabwe is a burden to different countries in the world. What we must do is to sit down as Zimbabweans, make sure that we resolve our domestic problem, but we have to have our friends. SATAC is mandated, and I'm sure you understand that its creation and its responsibility is helping Zimbabweans, helping member states to resolve such political crisis because we have to have a sustainable solution to the trouble that is bedeviling our country. This is Viva. Are you going to court? You have seen circulation of um, papers circulating, attempting like you want to go to the con court, challenge the, the presidential vote. In a very clear terms, are you going to court, challenge the presidential vote, or you are abandoning that route? Yes uh, thank no? you very much. Uh, Triple C is very clear in terms of its resolution. The resolution of the Citizens Coalition for Changes, led by Vietnam and Chamin, is that the election in Zimbabwe was flawed, and the election must be the only route to resolve the crisis in this country. How do we go there to restore legitimacy in our country? We must make sure that a new, fresh, and a credible election is brought in, and it must be scaffolded by SADC, guaranteed by SADC and the African Union and other critical players, because it takes two to tango. Zanupev cannot run this country alone. It takes two to tango. We must make sure that we bring every Zimbabwe and our process, my brother, so that we don't put the cart before the horse, it will include a lot of conversation with Zimbabweans domestically. You are going to see us engaging with members of the church. You are going to see us engaging with other political parties. You are going to see us engaging with regional and international players. I'm sure you are conscious that Sadiq has deployed a team here in Zimbabwe, and we're going to be engaging with different players so that we resolve the crisis of legitimacy. And that crisis is born out of a stolen election. And the solution in this country lies nowhere than making a free and having a credible election in this country. How do you are you, an election are, you, are you worried, are you not worried uh, that uh, South Africa, uh, President has congratulated President Emerson and the Nanga government win. In Namibia, the President Day has also followed suit. And these are the key players of SADC. And you are here telling us that you are going to engage SADC, which is already congratulating President Emerson and the Nanga government win. Uh, thank you very much. I'm not so sure if you understand geopolitics and the influence of certain parties in the regional body because it is very clear, my brother, blessing. A congratulatory message, a WhatsApp message, or a Twitter message does not define domestic and international politics. Domestic and international politics is defined by an election, is defined by the constitution of our country, is defined by rules and regulations that govern SATIC. And it is those rules and regulations by SATIC and us as member states that compel us to have those particular conversations with different players in the region. Members of the foreign so state... No, no, no. Uh, one more. One more. One more. One more. Ah, one more. Okay. Thank you. We have that one more from uh, SPAT and we are done. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. You're speaking for yourself. You were elected and declared 
a member of parliament in this election. Do you accept that declaration? Are you going to accept being a member of parliament? Thank you very much. I'm sure you understand that I'm not here to speak on my own behalf. I speak on behalf of the Citizens Coalition for Change and the dejected masses of our people. Millions that voted for the alternative and that expect change and their will was bastardized and those Zimbabweans want a free, fair and fresh election whose solution is going to guarantee a long and lasting solution to the crisis that is getting our country. We want that to happen in the shortest period of time. Thank you very much. Are, are you privy to why um, uh, Kikwete is around? Kikwete is in, in the country. Are you privy to why? Yeah. Of course, we're going to call it you. Thank you. Yes or no? <laughs> Who are you? 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 Who are you?